Hi there. Uh, welcome to the closing bell on uh, the second of Feb, and um, today I'm going to kick off um, having a look at the regional banks in the US. Uh, we've had some news out of there. One of the banks um, trouble with their commercial property portfolio, and um, uh, I guess you probably remember um, last year there was uh, lots of problems in that area, and um, I've sort of said in the past, you know, that commercial um, property area could end up um, being one of those um, catalysts for a bit of a sell-off uh, down the track. Uh, so I guess the question is, is uh, the um, news about one of them starting to get into trouble? Could that spiral? Um, is that going to be something we need to keep an eye on um, going forward? Uh, so uh, to start off, why not just look at that regional banking uh, ETF and get a sense of how it's looking and whether, you know, it is in an area where things could turn back down from. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a long-term chart of um, that regional banks in the US. Uh, I'm sure you know my way of just looking at the long-term trends uh, very simply is that 10-month uh, exponential versus 20-month simple just to give you a, a sense of the big picture moves uh, over time. It's been pretty good at picking out those long-term trends. You know, of course, you always have little periods um, which don't quite work, but all in all, over the last few decades, you know, not a bad um, sense of the long-term trends. So the first sort of thing to say is, you know, those regional banks are still in long-term downtrend, aren't they? Um, so you, you're not thinking uh, times are good again. And, uh, you know, that can be the case if things turn back up. But we're not at the point yet uh, where you're saying the current downtrend uh, is over. If anything, what we've seen is a bit of a um, rally from oversold conditions. Haven't we back to the moving averages? And things on the edge of turning back below that 10-month exponential. Um, so that's sort of a continuation um, formation similar to uh, what we've seen in the past. You know, an example of that would be uh, back here in 2019, 2020. You know, you've got the, the downtrend begins. And you always get, you know, a return to the moving averages. And if the selling returns, um, watch out, you get the continuation of that long-term downtrend. And one of the other major things I, I look for in these continuation patterns uh, is like an ABC, it's called, where you get the first wave down. And I'll, I'll point this out, where you have the A leg, correction back up, B leg there, the C leg, which takes out that high, and then the resumption of the initial downtrend. So that's where you've got A leg, B, C, which looks like it's going to break out and doesn't and continues to the downside. So if we look at what's going on here at the moment, if we look at that down leg, got the A correction here, the B leg, C looking like it's going to take off again. And if we get overlap, you can then have the continuation to the down leg downside from that ABC um, overlap. So it's often a, a good little hint. Um, that one, it's one of the strongest patterns out there, really, that the ABC, when you get it in the right way. Um, so from that point of view, um, looking at this, you're saying, oh, it's looking like it could be ready um, to turn back down again. And also, uh, you know, I like to look at these major waves, and so that's the last big up wave after the 2020 crash and the rally um, over the next few years. And I look at the buy and sell zones of those waves. And also the point of control, so the, the midpoint of that whole wave. And you can see that the big correction that we saw over the past few years going down into that buy zone area down here, good buying support out of there and rallying back to the point of control, which is where you'd sort of expect it to get to. 
if there is selling pressure around, that's where it will turn back down from. Um, so really, if it turns back up, breaks up through that point of control, you know, you're getting targets back towards that sell zone area. But while there's um, selling pressure, long-term downtrend, we've seen the buying pressure out of that buy zone back to the point of control. Is there selling pressure at that point of control? There has been, and it's starting to turn back down. So there's just quite a few sort of technical signs that uh, that uh, rally that we've seen over the last few months has been corrective, um, and really it's been quite a while. Um, when was that low created? That was in May last year. So, you know, so there's been quite a long recovery rally going on, but it hasn't really uh, recovered that much ground. It's just managed to get back to that big resistance at the midpoint. And if it turns back down, especially a monthly sell pivot, uh, below there and you're just saying well this could be a continuation um, the drama may not be over uh, in those regional banks so let's just have a quick look at some of those property stocks uh, in the commercial property area so here is uh, Vornado Realty Trust um, you can see the disaster it's been uh, this is going back a very long way um, you know back up into 2007 um, we had the crash there, a recovery up to 90 bucks. And uh, yeah, this is what they've seen um, heading down to, you know, nearly 10 bucks. Uh, so a nearly, nearly complete implosion. And, you know, there has been a nice recovery, hasn't there? But compared to um, the sell-off, you know, uh, it's still looking uh, pretty dangerous, isn't it? Um, everyone's hoping rates come down. They are starting to fall. I'll look at those 10-year yields very soon. But just wanted to show you the real situation out there, some of these um, uh, commercial real estate um, uh, property companies, uh, so that you could get a sense that it is still um, you know, pretty pretty tough conditions out there, isn't it? Um, so Hudson Pacific Properties, properties. so um, you know, over in that tech space you know, on, the, on the Pacific, San Fran, et cetera, um, obviously lots of problems there. Um, also, SL Green Realty um, Corp. Again, just getting a sense, look, it is trying to recover, and look, maybe that's it, and, and things are going to head back up as rates fall. Uh, but, you know, it's fallen from 140 down at 46 so it's um you know certainly um high risk jumping on um something like that that's collapsed as it has piedmont office realty 24 bucks down to six um you know is that downtrend over um i don't know about that uh, cousins properties um you know that collapsed a long time ago and has never really recovered much but uh, is plumbing along you know, the, the lowest levels uh, it's been at for really decades. Uh, Kilroy Realty Corporation, again, just giving you a sense that it's been uh, pretty disastrous out there over the last few years in these companies. And, uh, you know, is it all over? You know, perhaps if we get the long-term trend shift, you know, it's, some, it's a time like this. We've seen the crash and we're about to see the recovery as rates fall. You know, so I'm open to that. But um, just be aware, you know, these stocks, 90 bucks down to 35, still uh, looking uh, not that great uh, at this very minute. So, you know, are some of these companies going to hit the wall? Who knows? Does that affect the um, regional banks? Um, is there sort of some big losses in the wings that could flare up again? So that's the one thing to just keep in the back of your mind. Um, but, you know, looking at the... Uh, Big picture stocks, we're still in this market where, you know, small caps, micro caps, it is just, it really is tough um, out there still. Uh, uranium, really, the, the, the story that's going, I told you about them uh, long ago. Hopefully, um, you're reaping the rewards um, from that call. Uh, but for me, in the s and I'm really just saying uh, I'm well aware that false breaks happen, uh, like double tops. So things like this do happen, but you need to have it sort of give you the signs of that before you can worry. So for the moment, I'm just allowing this resumption of the long-term uptrend 
it is looking like a breakout. Can it really break out? Um, it amazed me if it can, but, you know, maybe AI um, spreading through other companies, uh, you know, margin expansion. I've talked about this before. Perhaps, you know, we're on the cusp of some sort of revolution like that. Um, so for now, it's allowing this to play out. But, boy, I'm really aware that this could carry on for another few months and then we could get a monthly sell pivot fail but back below that previous high from a few years ago and all of a sudden it can look very different um, like back here in 2008 up through the highs looking good turns down long-term downtrend and then watch out so you know we're always like that aren't we you know there's always the fear that things can turn down but the state of the market at the moment is just giving it the benefit of the doubt and seeing what can happen and really focusing on interest rate sensitive uh, sectors. That's what I've been doing um, for my members uh, in uh, Retirement Trader, sort of looking for companies that, that are going to benefit if rates do come off and getting exposure to bonds uh, as a bit of a hedge in case stocks do turn down. Because we may get a situation where rates fall uh, and stocks fall. And if that does happen, um, it'll be nice to have be earning some good yield um, on the bonds, uh, which are at pretty high levels. So looking at the 10-year um, bonds, let's have a look at US bonds. So this is the uh, US 10-year bond yield chart. And this is really the story of everything. Um, this is what has created the nightmare for us in uh, small cap space, speculative stocks, um, so many things, everything's driven by this chart. So it's very um, important to get to know it well. Um, and I told you a few months ago, uh, we got the sell pivot in the bond yield. And you should know that when the yield goes up, price goes down. When the yield's going down, the price of those bonds going up. Uh, so this is actually a big sell-off in the bonds. And this is now a rally in the bonds that we're seeing with the yield dropping from 5% to 4%. And what I'm waiting for is for the long-term trend to finally turn down. And it hasn't happened yet. Uh, but you can see in the past uh, cycles, it's been pretty good once it does turn uh, to get ready uh, for rates to uh, possibly drop. And I think everyone um, thinking that's what we're on the cusp of. But, you know, uh, we had uh, the Fed pushing back on that over the last few days. Um, so, you know, uh, watching inflation, there's, you know, a real loosening of financial conditions happening, stocks rallying, uh, bonds rallying. So, you know, does inflation pick back up? We, you've got to have that in the back of your mind. Uh, but for the moment, all I'm doing is allowing this rally to play out where you've got the... Uh, Sell pivot in the yield there. We've got another strong bar, which I call the key bar, now that it's closed below that sell pivot. So I'm just allowing this to play out. And I really need to see yields close on a monthly basis here back above that sort of 4.35, 4.4%. So until that happens, um, I'm saying uh, yields falling is the best bet. And once the long-term downtrend shifts, you know, then you're, you're ratcheting it to an even higher confidence level. Um, but really, the yield needs to go back below that sort of 3.3% uh, area um, to really get confident that things are uh, turning down. You'll see long term, uh, that's been a major level around there. That was the peak of uh, that um, cycle there. Back in 2013, 14, another peak happened there. So, you know, it could go down, find support there and, and turn back up. Uh, but for the moment, we're really you know, looking bullish on the bonds, thinking they're going to continue rallying and making decisions sort of around that um, in the stocks. And I thought I'd quickly touch on um, Spotify. I gave this one um, to you. Um, to uh, people watching Closing Bell uh, for free, um, around 150 bucks, didn't I? Um, it was a few months ago around this area. Um, I had a few um, uh, Closing Bells where I was pointing it out to you. And at the time, 
Um, you know, it's, it's nice to look back and see how things panned out. Um, I think it's rare that people do that. Um, but yeah, to see what I was looking at, what I was telling you about, you know, these major waves and talking about the point of control of that wave, um, so, you know, with uh, Spotify in 2019 going from, you know, about 100 bucks up to nearly 400 bucks and then collapsing. And what I was talking about was, you know, there's been a big clear out of positions when prices went below uh, that initial low created in 2019. So there's months and months of, you know, a lot of investors giving up the ghost, um, clear out of positions. And then we had the false break. So we had the buy pivot created, started to recover. We got the long-term trend shift happening there. We've got the key bars marching higher. And I was saying to you at the time, look, it's still in that buy zone area of this whole major wave. And I was saying around 150 bucks, look, this one is looking pretty good. And I, my target was back towards that point of control uh, up around 240. Not quite there yet, but um, you know you can see that it really is starting to power. So I hope a few of you did manage to get on that one. Write in the comments below if you did. Love to hear from you um, and love to hear some good stories in a, in a market like this. It's been really tough. Um, also on the uranium, you know, did you buy a few of the uranium stocks I was pointing out to you months ago? Um, so that's, I think, enough for today. Um, you know, stocks rallying, everything looking great. Uh, but uh, I think things get overstretched. They've really rallied hard. Um, so I'm letting this trend take place, but, um, you know, well aware that uh, the music can stop and just keep an eye on those regional banks. All right, I'll um, come back with more next week.